Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our exercise class with Deborah on Thursdays at 1.30 p.m. So uh, take it away, Debbie. All right. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Hopefully your summer has been going well. I'm not ready to concede that it's over yet. So uh, my name is Debbie Kosminski, and um, I'll be guiding you through some of our stretch fusion. I try to make the class different each time that we do it. Um, and I try to actually be aware of my audience in front of me uh, based on specific needs or, or people who uh, may have issues. I want everyone to feel comfortable. I wanna make sure that I can do something for everyone. Um, if I ask you to do something that you know is not good for you, since I don't know you all personally and know what your um, any issues might be, then don't do it. If I tell you to come all the way up like this and you have a shoulder issue, then either come up less or honor your body. That's the number one rule of mine to honor your body. If I do something and you're not really sure how to modify it, then after class, ask me and I'll, I'll be more than happy to go over some things with, with everybody. Um, for today, I'm gonna keep it to a lot of the chair, the standing, we're gonna do some moves that may borrow a little bit from yoga, a little bit from Pilates, and a little bit from Body Sculpting 101. So I, I keep it all um, just as a mix. So we are going to start by standing. And again, if, if anyone needs to sit for any particular exercises, I can help you out with that as well. We're gonna take- Debra, a can I interrupt you for just one second? Yes. I'm sorry. Hi, I just wanted to mention, I forgot to mention, today is September 7th, 2023, and this class is being held at the Levittown Public Library. Okay, all right, so now we can officially get started. So we're going to start with a little bit of, of a march, and we're pumping our arms, but it's in slow motion. We're just trying to warm up the body and, and get um, our blood flowing uh, while we do this march. Whether you bring your legs up high or low is totally up to you. We're going to do it in eights, and I will cue you through different arm motions. So we're going to start with that right leg coming up first, and you're just going to pump it up for one and two. Here's three and four. Here's five, six, seven, and eight. Now fold the arms for one. Legs just keep going. And two and three and four, here's five, six, seven fingers to the sky for one and two, here's three, four, five, six, seven, drop the elbows, take them down and up, and two, and three, the pace just stays the same, here's five, six, seven add that little twist for one you don't have to go far two here's three four five six seven back to center no twist one and two here's three four five six seven keep those fingers up for one two three four five, six, seven, fold the arms, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fingers down like we started for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, sometimes it's even harder to go slower. <laughs> all right, all right. It wasn't that tough to go slower. You still get your heart rate up, even though we're going at a slow pace. We're not jumping or doing any crazy things. I always like to include balance and coordination in, in um, all of my classes because it is so very important. So we're going to start with do a couple of balance routines. We're going to do coordination routines. You're going to be placing all of your weight on your left foot. Your chair is there if you need it try to challenge yourself by not using it. We're gonna be lifting our legs to a count of four. For today, we'll keep it easy. I'm just gonna have you hold it up there for a count of six and down for four. 
Sometimes I go to eight, sometimes I go to 10. You're gonna see where some of your um, issues are with your balance and it gives you a good feedback. So you're gonna feel that the leg you're standing on is working very hard, even though you're just standing there. So here we go, lifting that right knee up, bringing it up, two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, five, six, take it down, two, three, and four. We're gonna do that two more times. Bring the knee up, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, five, six, take it down, two, three, and four, good, one more time. Bringing it up, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, five, six, take it down, two, three, and four. So I bet you felt the calf in your standing leg working a little bit. So we're still not done with this side. You're gonna take that right foot and put it in front of the left. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see you don't have to turn sideways. So we're kind of heel to toe, but leave a small gap between. And we're just gonna, I call it a rocking horse. You're just gonna slightly lean forward, picking your back heel up, rock it forward, then rock it back, picking the front toes up, rock it forward, rock it back. We're gonna go for two more, rock it forward, rock it back. One more, rock it forward, rock it back, then lower the front toes. We're still on our tightrope. Now you're gonna pick up the right foot and put it behind the left. Now we're adding a little more motion to it. Now take that right foot back in front, bring it behind again, and take it in front. Two more times like that, take it behind, and in front, one more, bring it behind, bring it in front, and now your feet are parallel. So we're gonna do those same three exercises. Next week, I'll probably swap out and add a few different ones, but we'll keep it for that, like that for now. So now everything that we did on one side, we're gonna do on the other side. So we did three of the lifts and four of everything else. So now that left knee is gonna come up. So bringing it up, two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, five, six, take it down, two, three, and four. Good, doing that again. Bring it up. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, five, six, take it down, two, three, and four. One more time. Bring it up. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, five, six, take it down, two, three, and four. One. All right, so the body's not symmetrical. You may have better balance on one foot than the other. So it's good to be aware of that. All right, so now you're gonna take your left foot in front of the right heel to toe again with that slight gap between so that you don't catch one foot on the other. So we're on our tightrope. And now we're gonna rock it on our rocking horse. So rock it forward, the back heel comes up. Rock back, front toes come up. Taking it forward, back heel up. Take it back, front toes up. Two more times like that, rock it forward, back heel up, rock it back, front toes up. Last time like this, rock it forward, back heel up, rock it back, front toes up, lower the front toes. Now actually pick up that left foot, put it behind the right and bring it back in front. Good, put it behind and in front. So we're adding a little bit more motion to our balance, take it behind and in front. One more time, take it behind, bring it in front, and feet are parallel. All right, so that was a little bit of our, of our balance. So we're gonna do some coordination drills, which now we're moving a little bit more with our coordination. We are going to um, slowly bring our arms in front, and you're going to be lifting your right knee as you're lowering the left arm. You're gonna be tapping the leg that is not moving. So that the tendency is to tap that knee that's moving, but we're not doing that. We're gonna go for eight on one side, eight on the other side, 
and then we are going to alternate it. And then we're going to do a similar thing out to the side. So here we go. Slowly bring that right knee up, taking it for one and down and two and here's three and four, four more, taking it for five and six, two more. Here's seven and eight. Now take it to the other side. Same thing. Here we go for one and two. Good, and three, good job, and four. Here's five, six, two more coming up, taking it for seven, and eight. Good, so we're gonna alternate. Now the right leg starts, left hand comes down. So that's one, and switch, and two. Here's switch, good, and three. Good, tap in the leg that's not moving, and four, and switch. Here's five, and and six, two more counts, taking it for seven, and other side, one more, and eight, and other side. All right. So we're gonna do one more coordination. This time, the left arm comes out to the side, the right leg comes up a little bit. Now, up can be just be an inch. If you have a problem with that and you need to hold on to your chair, you can take it out like this, then taking it out to the other side, and then, touching the chair if and when you need to. So safety always comes first. All right, so it's gonna be the same starting, right leg, left arm out to the side for eight. You don't have to go high. Bringing it up for one, taking it down. And two, same side. Here's three. And four. Here's five. And six. Here's seven, good job. And a good taking it to the other side. I'll kick my chair. All right, here we go. Bring it up for one and two, taking it for three and four. Here's five and six, two more, seven and eight. Good. All right, so we are going to alternate this as well. So here we go right leg, left arm. Here we go to the side for one and switch and two, other side, here's three, switch, and four, good, keep going, here's five, other side, and six, two more counts coming up, taking it for seven, and other side, last one, and eight, and switch, all right, good job with that. So even though we were working on coordination, your arms were up, you were using them, you were moving your legs, getting up, getting a lot of the muscles in the body in that. All right, so we're gonna do a standing stretch. Um, it's called a standing mermaid. And I teach Pilates classes. So in Pilates, we do it on the mat, we do the mermaid. So I've just kind of translated that into something that we can do standing. So what you're doing is you're holding your hands just down by your hips. And we're going to, your feet should be about hip distance apart. And you're going to bring your arms up overhead. If you have a shoulder issue, you don't have to go as far up. So we just bring the arms all the way up. You're gonna bend to the right. Hold that position, let the right hand continue taking it down, reaching through, we're getting a stretch there, coming all the way back up, meeting the other hand. Then your body comes up and the arms come down. We're gonna go four on each side. So bringing the arms up, taking it over to the right, framing your head, letting that right hand continue, reach it through, bring it back up all the way and take it down. Two more coming up, slowly come up. Next week, I'm gonna add specific breathing to this. Take it over to the side, bringing it through, coming all the way back up and bringing it down. Let's go for one more, bringing it all the way up and over bringing it through and all the way up and taking it down. All right, I may have been five, I don't know. Sometimes as I'm talking, I'm losing count there. So it happens. All right, so slowly bring your arms up all the way for taking it over to the other side, framing the head, taking it over to the left, let that left hand just flow and bring it all the way back up. Body comes up and arms come down. Good, taking it all the way up for two, over to the side, left, left arm flow through, reach, get that stretch, all the way up, 
and taking it down and bringing it up for three. Over to the side, let that left hand come through, bring it back all the way up and take it down. Good, we're going for one more. All the way up, taking it over to the side, reaching it through, all the way back up, bringing it up and taking it down. All right, so we're gonna take it into some arm circles. And when we come back and down, I want you to squeeze the shoulder blades together as you come down. Make your circles as big or small that is appropriate for you. So arms are facing forward, He's keeping it with the hip distance or a little slightly more. So you're just gonna bring the arms forward up as high as you can safely, bring them down, squeeze the shoulder blades and come around and bringing them up for two. We're gonna go for a total of eight and squeeze the shoulder blades. Up and around for three and squeeze. Taking it for four and bringing it around, opening up the chest, taking it for five and around. Here's six, bringing it around, two more coming up, taking it for seven and bringing it back, one more and eight and bringing it around. Now reverse your direction, up and around for one. And I'm gonna go a tiny bit faster and two and three, taking it for four and five. Here's six, two more and seven, one more and eight and take it down. All right, so only do what is appropriate for you. If, if eight or 10 or whatever is too many, you do what is safe for you. I won't yell at anybody. There's no rules. Safety always comes first. All right, so we're gonna do some press backs with the hands. Now, if you have no shoulder issues, hold them up here. If you have issues, you hold them lower. We're gonna press back for eight, down for eight, front for eight, up for eight. We're gonna do two sets of that. So they're pretty fast. So here we go, pressing it back. For one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, down for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, front, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, to the back again, take it back, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and down for one, two, three, four, five, six, to the front, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up, and one, two, three, four four, five, six, seven, and done, and bring your arms down. All right, so we're gonna stay, stay in a, what I call a plie position, kind of wide stance with your feet slightly turned out. And now in this position, we are gonna reach to the right eight times with a slight bend in the knee. If you have knee issues, don't bend too far, just do what's good for you. So our reach is just gonna be out like this for eight. Then we're gonna to reach to the left for eight. And then we're gonna take it side to side for two counts of eight. So it's a stretch, stretch and movement. So to the right first, right knee slightly bends, reach, bringing it up for one, taking it down and reach for two and down. Go each time a little farther and three, but never push anything. Taking it for four, but making sure that that knee doesn't pass your foot. Taking it for five, bringing it up, and six. Taking it for seven, we'll go one set on each side, and eight, good, taking it to the other side, for one, and back, and two. So you shouldn't have to change your feet at all, and three, and, and four, four more. Taking it for five, and up, and six, two more. Here's seven and eight. We're gonna go side to side, taking it to the right and to the left. And two and reach. Taking it for three and other side. Here's four and reach. That's five. You're getting an arm workout here as well. That's a bonus. And six. Two more coming up. Taking it for seven and reach. Last one, taking it for eight and reach and bringing the arms down. All right, so initially I said two sets because I'm used to doing these for cardio where we're reaching it for one like this and the other side and we go two sets. So I realized as we started, we're gonna be here forever. So 
you take, I change things a lot. I might say something and realize as I'm doing it that now let me change it up a little bit just to make it make more sense. All right, so we are going to take it to our chairs. We're gonna have a seat. I know it was a long, a little long stretch there. <laughs> you work hard when you're standing too anyway. All right, so we're gonna do a few stretch like motions that I stole a little bit from, from Pilates. But first off, we're gonna start with some breathing. And yeah, we all know how to breathe. We've been doing it since we uh, were born. Um, but we're gonna do some specific breathing because from the time we were an infant, if you watch an infant sleeping, their chest rises and falls really a, a lot. It rises and falls. They're taking these deep breaths. They know how to breathe properly. As we get older, um, maybe we forget or we do shallow breathing and we never fill the lungs, fill the diaphragm with air. So I want you to, you're gonna take your hands like this right at your rib cage. And I want you to take a nice deep inhale. I want you to feel your ribs pressing into the hands. So when I say breathe into your hands, that's what I mean. You're gonna see my hands slightly move. I'm not moving them, my rib cage is. We're working the muscles inside that and we're also, it's good for your circulation. It's good for stress. All right, so you're taking a nice deep inhale. Feel it push and exhale. Feel it release and inhale. And exhale. Going for two more, nice deep inhale. And exhale. One more, nice deep inhale. And exhale. And then just breathe normally. So we're going to do a little bit, my take on um, a Pilates exercise called the hundreds, where you're pumping your arms. Now, normally they're called hundreds because you actually pump a hundred times. I'm not going to have you pump a hundred no. times. We're going to do it in fours and not fives in case you have Pilates, if I have Pilates experts here who say she's not doing it right. All right. So again, it's my take on it. We're going to pump the arms for four as we inhale. I don't want you to inhale with each pump going <laughs> You know, that would be too crazy. I want you to inhale during the duration of your hands pumping four times. A nice smooth inhale and a smooth exhale. We're only gonna do it three sets, so it's not gonna be too crazy. So your arms are nice and long. You're moving from the shoulders, not flopping your wrists or anything else. And you're going to inhale two, three, four, and exhale two, three, four, and inhale two, three, four, and exhale two, one more set and inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, and four. All right, so from here, we're gonna take it into another uh, influence, Pilates influence. It's called a roll down, but we're gonna do our roll down. And I think I did a little of this while standing when we were doing it um, the last session. Um, you're going to, I'm turning sideways so you can see, so you don't have to. So I'm gonna start with the head. I'm gonna tip my chin, pull the belly button in and tuck my hips a little bit as I slide my hands down towards my ankles. Now, if that's too much for you, you can just slide like this and then just push the back out a little bit, stretching out the spine. So again, just tipping the head, tucking the hips, just reaching down as far down as is safe for you, making sure you are secure on your chair. I'm taking it all the way down. There's also a yoga um, exercise where you just let your head and your arms hang for a rag doll. So this looks a little bit like the rag doll. So now if you are in this position, place your hands on your thighs and help yourself roll up so that you don't use your lower back doing that. We are going to go for one more. I mean, so I'm going to add arms a little bit by bringing my arms up and over. If you want to Keep your hands on your thighs just to slow yourself down or, or keep yourself safe and do that. I always layer in intensity. I start off with something easy. I make it harder so that you can always stop where it's good for you. You don't have to go any farther. So I'm just bringing my arms all the way up like I'm going to dive, tucking my chin, pulling my belly button in, rolling it all the way over. And now from this position, you can just hang there a little bit. And to come up, you can place your hands on the top of your thighs. If you know you're safe rolling up without that, then just roll it all the way back up. And bring the <laughs> arms down and around. All right, good job with that. So 
Um, we're going to do what's called a one leg circle, stretching out the um, thigh and hip flexors. So you're going to have your left leg bent, the right leg is out to the side. If making a circle with your leg straight like that is too much for you, bend the leg and then just make little circles like that. If you have a hip issue and that's too much for you, then just make it really tiny. Don't put any pressure. Like I said, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. So I'm gonna start with that right leg and I'm just gonna lift it up out and around. So just bringing it up, out and around for one, nice and slow, and two, we're gonna go for five. Here's three, and four, and five. Now reverse that, outwards and around for one, and two. Here's three, and four, and five. Good, taking it to the other leg. And we're gonna, I'll go outwards first, up and around for one. Doesn't matter, we'll hit both sides. And two, taking it for three, and four, and five, and reverse the direction for one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and bringing that leg down. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of a rendition of some people rolling like a ball. I know we're not gonna roll in our chairs, but you're going to, if you can, I'll give you a couple of different ways to do it. You can either just bring your hands behind the back of the thigh, tuck your chin, and you're just gonna roll back a little bit and come forward. Another option is to actually hug it in and roll back and take it in forward. So whatever you feel comfortable with, either underneath or on top, we're just gonna go for four of them. So tuck yourself as if your back was a nice little ball and you're just gonna rock it forward and then bring yourself back, keeping that shape, rocking it forward for two, bringing it back, rock it forward for three, and back one more time, rock it forward for four, and bring it back, and you can lower the leg down. I'm gonna turn the other direction, you stay where you are, just so that you can see. And again, whatever position suits you, taking it in, tucking it, pulling the belly button in, navel to the spine, just rocking it back and bringing yourself forward, taking it for two and bringing it back, taking it for three and bring it back. One more, taking it for four and bringing it all the way back and dropping that leg down. So normally you would be on a mat tucked in like a little ball and you'd actually roll to the top to your shoulder blades rolling back and rolling forward in in rolling like a ball so again i'm just modifying or adapting these so that we can do some of them in a in a chair position all right so we're going to do what's part of single leg stretch so it's a moving stretch you're going to bring your arms out to the sides and two ways to do it would be to hug your leg in from underneath or hug it in, reaching it in and hugging it in. So you do whatever is appropriate for you. So bringing your arms out to the side, we're gonna take it all on one side first. Maybe next week we'll alternate that. So bringing the arms out and bring that right knee in, hug it in for one, tucking and reach it out, taking it for two and reach, open up the chest, stretch it out, taking it for three, and bring it back, two more coming up, taking it for four, bringing it back one more, opening it for five, and bring it back. We're doing the same thing now with the other leg, bringing it in for one, hug and release, taking it for two, and release. Here's three, and reach, taking it for four, and reach one more, here's five, and reaching it out. All right, so we're gonna take it into a double leg. No, don't, don't worry, I'm not having both legs come up, but we are going to bring our arms all the way up to the letter V, and then we're gonna hug both knees as you lift your heels. So you're gonna start with both arms out to the sides, slight arch, and now tuck everything, lift your heels, hug towards your knees, and again, bring it all the way up for two, and take it down and hug, bringing it up for three, 
and taking it down. Let's go for two more, all the way up for four and bring it down. One more coming up, up for five and taking it all the way down. All right. So we're going to take it into what's called a lower lift. Now, normally you would be on your back. Your legs would be up towards the ceiling and you would be lowering and lifting your legs. So obviously we can't do that in the chair. I'm going to give you two arm positions, either keeping your hands. The easier way would be keeping your hands here. The harder way would be behind the back of your head, pushing your elbows away. So if you have shoulder issues, then you might want to stick to this. You're gonna keep your body nice and straight and you're gonna be lowering your chest towards the top of your thighs and then pulling yourself up as if the belly button is pushing you up flat back. So I'm showing you sideways. I'm gonna have my hands behind the back of my head. And now I'm just gonna lean it forward and then bring myself back up as if the belly button is pushing. So pick this, the position that is best for you and slowly take it back forward and now let the body come up. We're gonna go for four of them. Take it down for two and bring it up. Two more coming up. Taking it down for three and bring it up. One more coming up. Taking it down for four and up. All right, so the next exercise or the next stretch we're doing is called crisscross. So, Two ways to do it, easier. You're just gonna, with a little bit of a twist, reach for your thighs, alternating. The harder way is up here, which they flow into each other. So whichever way you ended up with the other one is makes more sense to start with the other. So the elbow is gonna come towards the leg. So whether you just come like this or whether you come farther is up to you. It's your right leg with the left elbow. We are gonna alternate. Don't pull or tug on your head. You're just resting your hands there. All right, here we go. Twisting to the right and then twisting to the left. Good, taking it for two and other side. Over for three and switch. Taking it for four and switch. One more each side, taking it for five and switch and bring the arms down. All right. So we're gonna do a little bit uh, more of a seated and if we have time, depending on how, how things go, we'll do um, three things, standing um, and end off standing. But what we're doing seated now, um, and this is more of what I did last time. I know a lot of these things are different from what I did last time, but I figured, you know, I wanna change it up. Um, so we're gonna take it to a um, nice wide stance. I'm just turning this way because the chair's kind of come up a little bit. And also be mindful, the chairs do have a little bit of a rounded edge. And the first time I say that, I almost felt like I was gonna rock. So just be mindful of that. So I'm taking my legs apart. My hands are on the inner thighs and I'm just gonna really press back, stretching into the hip flexor area and then just relaxing. And now pressing back for two and relax. We're going for five here, pressing for three and relax two more, pressing for four, and relax one more, pressing for five, and relax. Staying in this position, you're gonna press back and hold it there, leaning forward a little bit. By leaning forward, you're actually pushing your legs farther apart, stretching out your hips a little bit. If you've had surgeries or anything, then keep it smaller, do whatever you know that you're supposed to do, especially if you've had hip replacements. So we're gonna dip that right shoulder down towards the floor a little bit as we twist. You're pushing a little bit more into that right thigh, getting a stretch in the core and getting a stretch in the leg a little bit more. And then taking it to the center and now dip the left shoulder down towards the floor, pressing into that inner thigh, getting that nice stretch. and bringing yourself back to the center and coming up. We're gonna stay with our legs in this position. I'm gonna steal a little bit from yoga now, a little influence. I'm bringing my arms out to the side. We are gonna to lean to the right. You're gonna place your right forearm on your right thigh as you take it over, reach up to the ceiling with the left hand, looking up towards the hand that is up towards the ceiling. You can stay here 
An option to make it a little bit harder would be to take your right hand behind the left leg and even harder would be taking it in front. Again, only do what is good for you. Be mindful that you don't come too far on your chair. We don't want you to fall. And to come up, if you feel like you're gonna have a problem, place your hand back on your thigh and help push yourself up. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So taking it over to the left, resting the forearm on the thigh, looking up towards the ceiling, getting that nice stretch in the whole right side of the body, placing your left hand, either let it stay there, or bring it to a spot either behind that left leg or in front, depending on what is safe for you. And again, to come back up, if you need the help, place your hand on the thigh and help you come up. If you can do it without, then do it without. And then we're bringing the arms down. So we're gonna bring our right leg out in front with the heel down and the toes are up. Make sure you don't put any weight on that extended knee. Don't rest on it. Just leaning towards it. Again, be mindful of your chair, leaning towards the leg. Feeling a stretch in the back of the thigh and the calf, reaching towards your foot. Again, be mindful of your chair that it doesn't slide out. And then bringing yourself back up. I'm waiting for the day that I pull up my chair. It might happen and it'll be recorded, okay? All right, so a couple of different ways to place your leg depending again on, on abilities and, and what's good for you. You can either cross at the ankle, the right ankle at the left ankle, or bring that right ankle on top of the left thigh if that works for you. Just bringing it up here. If that's not for you, keep it down there. I'm pressing into the thigh again. If you've had hip replacements, this is not recommended for you. So as I'm pressing down, I'm leaning forward. Be mindful of what you're feeling when you do a certain movement. By leaning forward, pressing into that thigh, you're feeling a stretch in that glute area. Those of you who may be more flexible um, or used to yoga poses may want to reach up and over. If that's not good for you, again, keep your hands. Stop at the position that is best for you. And if you are way down in this position, Take your hands and put them on your calf or your shin, and then use your arms to push yourself up so you don't use your lower back. And from here, I'm gonna take my left hand in the center of the right thigh. Use that leg for leverage as I twist to look all the way over that right shoulder. And then taking it back to the center. So we're gonna rotate our ankle, whether you're, you're here or up here, you're just gonna rotate your ankle around five times. That's one, two, slow and big as you can, and three. Here's four and five. Now reverse that, bringing it around for one and two. Here's three and four and five, excuse me, and bringing that leg down. So we're gonna do all of that on the other leg. So now you're gonna take your left leg, bringing it out with the heel down, toes are up, taking that flat back, leaning towards, make sure you don't put any pressure on the extended knee, reach towards your toes or your foot as far down as you can. and then bringing yourself up, crossing either at ankle to ankle or bringing it on top, whatever you're comfortable with. If you have no hip issues, put your hand on the inner thigh, press it down in that position, leaning forward, feeling the stretch. And every time you make a different movement, register in your brain, where am I feeling that? What am I feeling? Those of you who may be more flexible and are okay with bringing your arms up and over towards the floor, taking that down. And if you are in this further down position, place your hands on your calf or shin, let your arms help your body come up. 
And then you're going to take the right hand in the center of the left thigh, press into the thigh as you look all the way over towards the windows. And bringing yourself back to the center. We're going to rotate the ankle five times, bringing it around for one, two, three, four, one more, and five and bringing that leg down. So it's important to keep your ankles both strong and flexible because that will help you prevent falls. If your ankle is super rigid and you misstep or on a crack in the sidewalk, you may go right over. If your ankle is flexible, you may bend with it and possibly avert a fall. So it's important to keep your ankles both strong and flexible. So I always, I always make sure that we do things like that. All right. So we are going to take it to a little bit of upper body. We're going to roll our shoulders a little bit. We're going to do some neck releases. Uh, be mindful if you have any shoulder issues that you take everything nice and easy and just do what you know is safe for you. So we're going to start with just bringing the shoulders all the way up to the ears and then drop them down. Imagine you can reach the floor. And bring them all the way up for two and take it down. All the way up for three and take it down. We're going to go for two more, bringing them up for four and take it down. One more coming up, up for five and taking it down. All right, so we're going to take them shoulder rolls, bringing them up and around for one a little faster and two, taking it for four. Here's three and four and reverse that bringing it up and around for one and two and three and four and then just let your arms hang where they normally hang all right so you're going to keep the shoulders level keep your chin level like you're on a shelf without twisting your body you're going to look all the way over to the right as far as you safely can don't force anything And now come back to the center and now the same thing, slowly come over all the way to the left without twisting your body. And look back to the center. So we're gonna change that up a little bit. Look over the right shoulder again. This time drop your chin, roll it across your chest from right to left and then come to the center. Now look over the left shoulder, drop your chin, roll it across your chest from left to right and look center. So now taking it over the right shoulder again, you're going to lower your chin three times towards your collarbone as if you wanna tap your collarbone with your chin. So slowly lower it down and then just lift the chin up. Lower it down for two and up one more time. Lower it for three and lift up. Now look to the center. Now look all the way over your left shoulder and keep that position. Tap the collarbone, lower the chin for one, still looking towards the left, taking it down for two, and bringing it up one more, taking it for three, and bringing it up and back to the center. So you're going to, I'm gonna add a little bit more of neck stretches. So again, if you have neck issues, be mindful and be careful with whatever you're doing. You're gonna lower your right ear to the right shoulder. This might be enough of a stretch for you. I layer them the intensity. If you want a deeper stretch, you can also take that left hand, reach it a little farther away from the body. You can also now add to that by taking your right hand at the left temple, a little bit of tension, don't yank or tug or pull on your head. You should feel pretty good. And for an even deeper stretch, you can take that left hand behind your back, making that stretch a little bit more intense. And if your hand is behind your back, you can release the hand that's behind your back. You can release the hand at your head. And you can also, if you need the assistance, take your right hand and just help your head come back up. Sometimes it's needed. All right, so we're taking that to the other side. You're gonna lower your left ear to the left shoulder. Enjoy that stretch. That initial stretch might be all you need. Then reaching towards the floor with the right hand away from the body. Taking that left hand at the right temple a little bit of pressure bringing the hand behind the back for that deeper stretch
and then releasing the hand that's behind the back. Release the hand at the head. And if you need to, you take the left hand and just help that hand back up. So we're gonna bring our arms in front, 90 degrees. We're gonna tip the chin, reach the fingertips to the crown of the head and let the weight of your arms just gently bring your head down. Releasing the fingers first, slowly bringing your head up. So we're gonna stretch our shoulders a little bit. So if you have shoulder issues, again, be mindful of what is safe for you. You're gonna bring your right arm out to the side, chest height. You're gonna slowly bring that right hand to the center, the left hand palm up, reach that palm towards your right forearm, and then just continue bringing the arm over. Now, there are other ways to do this stretch. You may be used to seeing it up like this. Um, either way is fine. Those are just a variation. I just take it the simplest way because sometimes if I say just do this, everybody looks like they're all tangled up. So I take it easier first, but you can certainly modify or change the stretch based on something that you're comfortable with. So you're gonna bring your right arm back to the front again. Let the left hand support at the upper arm and bring the arm up to the sky as you bend the elbow, reaching your fingers towards your shoulder. You can stay here. If you are more flexible, you can push that elbow up more. And if you're even more flexible and used to bringing your arm up and over like this, then do so if this is not good for you. If you're struggling to get here, then it's not you're not stretching anything. And if you are up in this position, you can take it over a little bit to the side bend to get even deeper with that. And then bringing yourself back up, bringing the arm down. So we're gonna take that same arm. You're gonna bring it out like you're saying, stop. Taking the left fingertips, gently pulling the fingers back, feeling that little stretch in the wrist and the forearm and the fingers. This might be enough for you if you want a deeper stretch. You can take that right palm up and bring the fingers down. It's a more intense stretch. If that's not good for you, go back to the prior stretch. And then release that hand, taking the other hand like you're um, bringing it out to the side. Start at the beginning here, I'm jumping the gun. And now bring that left hand to the center, the right hand palm up, reach for the forearm. Gently bring that straight arm across, don't force anything. You can also come up like this if that's what you're used to. And then you can reach that left arm out front, let the right hand slide to the upper arm, bringing the hand up towards the ceiling, bending at the elbow, reaching for your shoulder, pressing from the front if that works for you, up and over if you're okay with that, taking it into a little bit of that side bend. Now, if your hand is here, you can also take it into a little bit of a side bend like that. Again, adjust according to your body. There are no right or wrong. And slowly bring it all the way back up. Now you're going to bring that left hand out like you're saying stop. You're going to gently bring the fingers back. Feeling that stretch in the hands and in the forearm. This should feel good. And if you do want that deeper stretch, you can rotate that left arm up and just gently bring the fingers down or stay with the prior one. And bringing the hands down and bringing my hands to my side. We're gonna come all the way up with an inhale. The palms are gonna touch overhead or come to the center of your chest if overhead's not good for you. Exhale as you come back down. Now just breathe normally. You're gonna rotate your fingertips towards me further stretching a little bit of the forearms, a little bit of the fingers, and now bring your fingers up and over towards yourself. This is a little more awkward, so don't force it. Just go with how far you can go or keep them facing yourself or up towards the ceiling. So keep your elbows at the height they are. Just bring your fingertips to face to the ceiling. Interlace your fingers. You're gonna turn your palms facing towards me and slowly reach out, stretching out the fingers, stretching out the forearms. 
Ideally, we should be holding our stretches anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds. More with the 60 seconds if you're working on your flexibility, closer to the 30 seconds if you did a workout and you're just stretching things out and then just bring the arms down a little bit more. So we are just going to bring our arms out to the sides, reaching out. You're gonna cross to the front. That left hand is gonna be higher than the right and you're reaching towards your opposite shoulders, kind of giving yourself a hug. And now in this position, you're gonna tip your chin down and then try lifting your elbows up. Then lowering the elbows down, lift your chin up and open the arms out to the side again, nice big stretch. So now we're gonna do the same thing with that right hand higher than the left. So come around, give yourself a hug, reach for the opposite shoulders, tip your chin down, lift the elbows up, lower the elbows, lift the chin, and then bring the arms down. All right, so we're gonna take it into standing up a little bit. We may sit down again. And not sure exactly where we're going to go, but we're going to go. So in this position, we are going to be placing your right foot in front of the left, like you're on your tightrope again, but lightly on the floor. You're going to bring your hands in front of your chest, loose fist, and not quite meeting, and not from the shoulders, but from the elbows. You're going to open up your arms as you slide that right foot behind the left. You're just sliding it behind bringing it back in front. We're gonna go for three. So open it up for two, bring it back. One more, also working on our balance again, taking it for three and bringing it in front. Slide your feet so they're parallel, hands are down. We're gonna take it into a little bit of a, think of a yoga chair or not quite a squat. So as you come down, your arms are going forward. So now in this position, you're going to Open up your arms as you bring your right leg out to the side. Bring it back in and come up. So taking it down, out to the side, back to the center, and up one more time. Taking it down, out to the side, back to the center, and take it up. So now I'm bringing my palms forward, facing front. I'm going to bring my right foot slightly behind the left. And I'm going to curl my arms as I step back a tiny bit more. Just stepping it back, bringing it forward. Taking it back for two. So I'm not quite bringing my feet parallel to each other. That right foot is always behind the left a little bit more. Taking it for three and taking it forward. So now take it in that back position again. Stay there. Rotate your elbows up if you can. Try bringing that right foot parallel to the left. And now as you tap that right foot back, you're gonna straighten out your arms. You're just gonna tap it back, bring it forward. Tap it back for two, so you're not really moving your body. One more, tap it back for three, and bring it forward. Good, we're gonna do all of that on the other side. So you're gonna bring your left foot in front of the right, like you're on your tightrope, bringing your hands in front. And you're just going to glide that left foot behind the right as you open up the arms and bring it back. Taking it for two, bringing it back. One more, taking it for three, bringing it back. And your feet are parallel. The hands are down by the side, taking it into your little bit of a kind of a not really a squat. And now bring that left leg out to the side, come back to the center, and up. So taking it down, left leg out to the side, back to the center, and up one more, taking it down, left leg out to the side, back to the center, and up. So now my palms are facing forward. I still have that slight little fist there, or you can have straight hands, it's hard either way. You're gonna take that left leg slightly behind the right, and now step back a little more as you curl the arms and then bring it back, not even with the other foot, just slightly behind. Taking it back, bring it forward one more time, taking it back, 
bringing it forward. We're going to take it in that back position. Rotate the elbows up. Now, without moving your body, try to bring that left foot even with the right with that slight bend. Now you're going to straighten out the arms as you tap that left foot back. So tap it back, bring it up all without moving your body. Tap it back for two, bringing it forward. One more, tap it back for three, bringing it forward and bringing yourself up. So we're going to stretch out a little bit of the thighs. I'm turning sideways so you can see. I'm using the back of the chair. You're going to bring your right leg pretty far back, nice wide stance. Now you may feel this a little bit of a stretch in your hip flexors here and the front of the thigh without arching the back. I don't want you to feel it in the back, but I want you to push your hip forward and feel that stretch a little bit more in that position. If you don't have knee issues and you want that deeper stretch, you can try bending that right knee just a little bit more getting that deeper stretch. Try not to let that left knee go past your foot. Let it stay over the ankle. So I'm not going to change where my, my feet are situated, but I'm going to straighten out both legs. And now I'm going to lower the back heel as far to the floor as I can, getting a stretch in my calves and in the back of the thigh. And now in this position, Without changing anything, I'm just going to fold my body in half, aiming my chest down towards the floor. You're going to feel a stretch in the back of your front leg. And then slowly bringing yourself back up. Feet are parallel. We're going to do the same thing. I'll hook this leg, so my other leg is facing you. So you're going to step that left leg back. Push your Hip forward, if you want the deeper stretch, drop the knee a little bit, make sure that you're not arching or feeling it in the lower back. And now don't change the position of your feet, but just straighten out your legs. Lower the back heel as close to the floor as you can, feel the stretch in your calf, so both legs are as straight as you can get them. You're gonna fold the body at the hips, leaning, Forward, feeling the stretch now in the back of your front leg. Keep your head in line with the spine. Imagine you have a grapefruit under your chin. You don't want the chin touching your neck. And now bringing yourself back up. We're going to stand with the with parallel. And you're going to bring your arms all the way up with a nice deep inhale. Exhale, turn the palms away, reach down and back behind you, open up the chest and bring the arms to your side. And now we're bringing my heels slightly closer together and we're gonna inhale. As we inhale, the heels are gonna lift, the arms are gonna lift, the eyes will look up to the ceiling, but you're not lifting your head. So inhale up, everything comes up, the hands, the eyes, the heels. Exhale, everything comes down, eyes look down to the floor. One last time, inhale up, bring everything up. Exhale down, bring everything down. All right, so I'm so happy that you joined me today. Um, I'm always open for comments and suggestions. Um, everybody in Zoom land, thank you for joining me. Um, if you have questions, you can feel free to ask me after class. And if you have comments, I'm always open to that. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care now. Thank you very much.